Hey there, I'm Kendra from KendraPerry.net, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to understand and interpret and deal with the normal flora section of the GI map test. For functional health training and all the nerdy ins and outs of functional lab testing and online marketing advice to grow your health business, make sure to click the bell to subscribe to my channel and get notified when I post a video every Thursday. Hey guys, so if you're new to running the GI map and you want to become an expert so you can impress your clients and also help them get results, stay tuned for this video because I'm going to help you understand the normal intestinal microflora section, what they each mean and how to deal with it. And just so you know, guys, I've seen thousands of these tests, so I fully understand how to understand this section. Okay, guys, let's jump into it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to share my screen so that you guys can see what we are looking at when we're looking at the normal intestinal health flora. Okay, so this is your normal bacterial flora, and we're going to be going through um, this part of uh, the normal bacterial flora. We're going to talk about the phyla microbiota in another video. Okay, so Let's talk first about bacteroides. Um, so this stuff actually populates the lower GI tract. Um, it's protective against certain autoimmune disorders. It helps rep repair the mucosal barrier, which is the lining of the intestine. And it plays a really key role in energy production in the way that it helps ferment carbohydrates and produce fatty acids, which actually help feed some of the other beneficial bacteria. So that's your bacteroidetes. Um, Bifidobacterium and lactobacillus can actually fall into the same category because they both promote healthy digestion. They help maintain pH levels and immune system function. When these are low, um, a person is way more likely to have a pathogenic organism overgrowth. Um, so you're likely going to see issues in the opportunistic bacteria section when you have low bifidobacterium and low uh, lactobacillus. Low bifido in particular tends to make a person more susceptible to getting a C. diff infection. So sometimes you see that together. Definitely if you see a C. diff infection, you'll want to support it um, with a bifido uh, probiotic. I really like Claire Labs Therabiotic Factor 4. It's the high bifido strain probiotic. Um, I actually discuss how to successfully treat C. diff naturally in another video, so make sure to check that out. Um, the next ones we'll talk about are enterococcus, this one here, and the Escherichia. So these ones are a bit of a double-edged sword. Yes, they are beneficial. They, you know, help maintain the normal floor of the gut, but they do become opportunistic when they overgrow. So if you see these high, it typically will indicate a dysbiosis, that there is an imbalance in the flora because these two, when they're high, can actually crowd out some of the other normal bacteria flora. Clostridium and Enterobacter are similar. They are also good bacteria, but they do become an issue when they overgrow. So in this case, this person has a bit of a dysbiosis because we're seeing this high Clostridium. So this Clostridium actually might be outcompeting some of these other beneficial strains. Another thing that you can pick up um, from this normal bacteria flora section is if somebody might be at risk or may potentially have a small intestine bacterial overgrowth infection. Now keep in mind the GI map is not a test of the small intestine and you cannot determine somebody has SIBO based off a GI map, but there are a few clues. One of them you might find in the normal bacteria flora section. So as an example, um, in hydrogen SIBO, SIBO bacteroides, uh, lactobacillus, um, clostridium, escherichia, and enterobacter can all overgrow in SIBO. So if you see some of those elevated, it might sort of tip you off like maybe this person has a SIBO infection and that's why we're seeing those um, infections as high. When it comes to hydrogen sulfide SIBO, typically um, hydrogen um, enterococcus. It's just one of them. There are many other um, organisms that can overgrow with hydrogen sulfide, but one of the normal bacteria flora is the enterococcus. So that might be elevated and that could potentially, not always, but it may give you a bit of a tip off towards if someone has SIBO. Okay. 
So we're going to talk a little bit about probiotic therapy. So um, engage with me. Let me know in the comment section if you, uh, what your favorite probiotic is and what you would typically uh, recommend to your client in terms of a probiotic. I would love to know what your favorite probiotic is. Okay, so I want to talk about how to properly utilize um, probiotics effectively. So one thing to keep, on, keep in mind with um, probiotics is that they only really act as a support. They're not really going to fix this issue, um, and this is why. So in the large intestine, for every milliliter of fluid, there are over 100 billion organisms for every milliliter. So that's a really tiny amount of fluid. And if you look at your probiotic, I mean best case scenario is maybe you get 10 billion, maybe you get 50 billion, maybe you get 100 billion, but that's in one capsule, right? So really, you're not going to fix imbalances in the normal bacteria flora with probiotics, but they can be a good support, okay? Um, so, you know, if you're seeing imbalances, I would always recommend um, some sort of probiotic. If you have low lactobacillus, you may go with um, a higher lactobacillus probiotic. Like I said, if you have low bifidobacterium, I would go with the factor four Claire loves because it is a higher bifido strain. Um, with some of the other things, I would probably just go more with um, a spore-based probiotic, uh, something like mega sporebiotic or even Thrive. Those are really good probiotics that are very hearty. Uh, they're very good at surviving um, the acidic environment of the stomach and they're very good at repopulating um, the gut. Okay guys, so that's all I got. I hope that was helpful. Okay, so now that you understand a little bit better about how to um, interpret the normal bacteria flora section of the GI map, you might be wondering about what to do with the rest of the panel. So make sure to grab my GI map cheat sheet for practitioners, where I basically go through the entire panel and explain to you what everything is and what it means. If you want to grab that, just click the link below. And guys, if you like this video, let me know, leave me a comment, share this with your friends, like the video, and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that I know that you like this content and I will continue to be making videos just like this if you tell me that you're into it. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video.